Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is April the 17th, 2021. Let's talk about champion Demetrius Andrade's successful defense of his title over Liam Williams. I believe this tape is one of the best boxing tapes of the last few months. And by the way, it's in the highlights are in my favorites folder. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you have a situation in the middleweight and super middleweight divisions, right? 160 and 168, that really has a sense of urgency. And it's a unique style that fans need to look at. You have three guys who can move, and I mean really move. Billy Joe Saunders is one of them. He's about to fight Canelo. I personally feel, given the ridiculous odds on that fight, that that's one of the best plays of the year. I think Billy Joe Saunders has an excellent shot on an upset over Canelo. I think he moves too well for Canelo, right? Understand... Movers, it's a culture. Either a guy's prepared to move for 12 rounds or he's not. Right? Situational movers really aren't that successful. Movers also develop skills that others don't. The ability to pivot, the ability to move, whether or not to have a pocket. So I think Billy Joe Saunders is going to show Canelo something Canelo hasn't seen for several fights. We saw Canelo have a problem with movement against Arislandi Lara. Now, Canelo is diplomatic in interviews. He says that he learned a lot when he faced Lara. He learned a lot when he faced Mayweather, right? He officially lost the Mayweather fight. He, in my opinion, was awarded a decision in the Lara fight, right? I still think Lara won that fight. Well, now... Canelo's in the middle of, and let's call it as it is, an invasion of the United Kingdom, right? He beat, unbeaten, Callum Smith. Now he's going after unbeaten Billy Joe Saunders. This is after, of course, he beat then reigning champion Rocky Fielding, right? So, you know, I understand the UK has a lot of nationalism, especially now. My condolences on Prince Philip's death. Just understand, Canelo is taking out the top fighters in his division in your country. So that Canelo, Billy Joe Saunders fight is huge. But understand, if Saunders troubles Canelo, if the movement destabilizes Canelo, well, Canelo, who's one of the most gifted punchers in the sport, if he gets lucky and catches Saunders, right? If he wins that fight by stoppage, but boxing fans saw the problem Saunders was facing with movement, then in my opinion, he has to fight the other two guys blessed with movement in the 160-168 category. Unbeaten Caleb Plant, who is a champ at 168. And unbeaten Demetrius Andre, a champ at 160. Right? Just understand that Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, and Demetrius Andre are all bringing unique movement to the party. Now let's talk about Andre because it's really glaring in the beginning of this Liam Williams fight. By the way, that's one of the secrets to Andre. Andre likes to win early rounds and then coast a bit. You're in against a mover, you're behind, you start to get desperate. That plays into Andre's game. Now, if you're a young fighter and you're accustomed to coming forward and structure and stuff like that, you need to study this Andre Williams tape. Because this is a fluid mover. Andre, unbeaten, he's 33 years old, but has kept himself in tremendous shape. Right? Tremendous shape. 
And this is an older fighter who has great legs and more importantly, fast starter, right? So he catches flat-footed guys cold and he can go both ways. In other words, this is not the fighter who is always going to his right, right? Or who's always going to his left, who's just rolling away from your Sunday punch. That's not this guy. This guy has great legs. He's deliberately setting the tempo in the fight. He's going right and left. He's not allowing a pocket to form. And understand, this is when he's 100%. And he's big for 160. So this is a big guy who has punching power, who's deliberately deciding not to trade with you in the pocket. Now, Andre is also extremely cerebral. This is one of the smartest men in the sport. So he understands that early in a fight, an opponent doesn't know the angles of his punches. Right? This is like baseball, where the first time around the lineup, batters are looking at the pitcher and they're trying to figure out when does the ball leave his hand, right? What's his release point? You know, what's up with this windup with a hitch? They're trying to get timing. They're trying to get familiar. Well, Andre's one of those unique fighters who has made a decision that he's going to sweep the early rounds. He's also made a decision that he's going to, what I call, hide his hands. In other words, he comes out, he's throwing different punches. In other words, You'll see a hook. You'll see a straight left hand. He's a southpaw. You'll see uppercuts with both hands. And he's leading with them. In other words, he's not hiding behind a jab. I want you to look at the Liam Williams film. First three rounds of the fight. He's not setting the table and getting rhythm behind a jab. No, this guy literally is moving around, then he pivots and throws an uppercut. If that uppercut hits you, he'll throw another uppercut with the other hand or he'll throw a hook. It's power punch heavy. So as an opponent, you don't know the angles of the punches early. And understand too, Andre has developed his game. So he throws several punches well. Right? That uppercut can come at any time. And it's brutal. Understand, too, this is different than an Anthony Joshua uppercut. Right? Anthony Joshua almost decapitated Vladimir Klitschko with an uppercut late in their fight. But you notice Anthony Joshua needs for things to slow down a bit. He needs for there to be a lull in the action. He needs for the clouds to part and the sun to be up. Everything has to be pristine for him to throw that uppercut. Well, understand, Andre's uppercut is more of a Carl Frotch uppercut. In other words, the clouds are out. It's raining. There is chaos, at least to his opponent. And then Andre, who's moving, he's going right to left, left to right. You don't know where Andre's going to be. He's standing up one minute, another minute he's dropping down. Understand too, Andre deliberately will have his hands low, won't have his hands up. So you really don't know the angles of his punches, right? His hand's down here. And then he'll pivot, and while you're moving toward him, he'll step into the pocket with an uppercut. Traditional fighters can't figure out the style. As the great Hall of Fame NBA player Bill Russell used to say, the great ones are always different. With Andre, you have to forget traditional boxing. Right? Andre can fight traditionally. When he was younger, didn't have all the hair, Andre was much more orthodox. Like great jazz musicians, he has figured out 
that it's in deviating from what's expected that he has a distinct advantage. So Liam Williams is a guy with a punch. He is a guy with a lot of heart. He is a guy prepared to go the distance. He goes the distance against Andre. But here's what happens. Andre comes out the first round, is moving. Williams can't keep up with the speed. He can't handle the movement. It's very hard, unless you're getting Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Plant as your sparring partner, it's very hard to prepare for, right? Because Andre is going one way, then he stops and throws an uppercut. Andre's going another way, then he stops and throws a left hook from a southpaw stance. Right? So this is masterful stuff. Let me just say, when you see a fighter like Andre, and Andre needs to be careful because he's on the verge of becoming Swenaki, a guy with a great record who no one takes seriously because he hasn't fought the headliner opposition. Right? So Andre needs a big fight. If that requires him giving up money, he needs to make a decision. You know, what will it take for me to learn? Canelo, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, David Benavides. Into the ring, right? He needs a big scalp. But just understand, Andre, for a better, is the kind of guy you understand is much better than advertised in broad daylight. In other words, he's beaten a bunch of quality guys like Liam Williams, but they're not headliners. They're not historical fighters. No one's going to confuse Liam Williams with Canelo. If they both showed up at the mall and were a few feet away from each other, Canelo would be the one surrounded by fans. Right? My point to you is, I think very highly of David Benavides, for example. If Andre were to fight him, I already know Benavides would be favored big time, but Andre would be the value side of the play. Right? If Andre fights Canelo, regardless of who you think is going to win the fight, you understand you're going to get great odds on Andre, just like you're getting spectacular odds on Billy Joe Saunders. Let me say this too. If Andre fights Caleb Plant, now as I've said here in earlier videos, Plant's right hand looks a little bit underdeveloped to me. He has a hair trigger left hook. Right? He has a Floyd Mayweather, Anthony Joshua level left hook. But Caleb Plant really can't tame you with his right hand. Andre is more two handed than Caleb Plant. Let me repeat that. Andre is more right-handed than Caleb Plant. The guys who recognize when a guy has a weak hand are the movers. Right? Caleb Plant right now is able to move away from slower-footed opposition. He would not be able to move away from Demetrius Andre. Understand, too, Andre's not only in the early rounds, by the middle of the fight, Liam Williams is able to set up somewhat of a pocket on Andre, right? Andre's in his 30s. Eventually, Andre slows down a little bit, right? If a fighter doesn't have the motor of a Liam Williams to get knocked down in the second round, get off the canvas and still continue to come forward, if a fighter doesn't have that motor, Andre's going to beat him by a mile. Let me point out that on the scorecards, Andre beats Liam Williams by a mile. I can tell you with certainty that Williams was coming forward, was trying to fight the entire fight. Williams has a motor on him. Those fighters who you know need to take a lot of rounds off. They're finished against Andre. Well, let me just say, Andre Caleb Plant would be a fascinating fight 
because Khaled plants accustomed to being the mover in the fight. It's a different world when it's mover against mover. Let me also say too that I think Andre is more advanced than Khaled Plant because part of Andre's game is three-dimensional. In other words, Andre, very wide stance. Very wide stance. But Andre can move. This isn't Adrian Broner with the wide stance where he can't move. Andre has a wide stance and he can move. And Andre will drop his hands, right, and just have his head there. And the problem is it's hard to read when he's throwing his hands, when his hands are out of the frame. It's hard to catch a guy who trusts his reflexes as much as Andre does. Let me say, too, when a guy drops his hands against you, some opponents will get too excited. They'll say, oh, well, now's my chance to hit him. The problem is, as they open up trying to find Andre's head, Andre has counterpunching opportunities that he could take advantage of by leading with power shots. So this Andre performance, especially the first three rounds against Liam Williams, gets five stars from me. Masterful performance, I'll just say. Just like Billy Joe Saunders is in his 30s, Andre's in his 30s. There's an urgency. I hope the young Lions understand that it's now or never in terms of fighting these guys, right? Because both Billy Joe Saunders and Andre have had belts. They're both unbeaten. Right? And so if you're a young lion with a lot of time ahead of you, if you're 24, 25, 26, right, you can't keep avoiding these guys because eventually you'll see them in some farewell press conference. Right? The guy will say, hey, I made my millions. Andre has a very lucrative deal with Dezo. Right? These guys have made millions. Billy Joe Saunders has made millions. Billy Joe, unlike Andre, has signature fights, right? The Andy Lee fight was huge. The Chris Eubank fight was huge. The David Lemieux fight was huge. This Canelo fight is going to be huge, right? Understand, Billy Joe is already wealthy. He doesn't need the Canelo fight to leave with money in the bank. So if you're a young lion, Right now is the time to say, player, pick me, right? Canelo did just that with Floyd Mayweather. Let me just say, I know Canelo lost the fight. First, he got to see Floyd up close. So he got to learn from Floyd in the ring. Not only that, even if you're a critic of Canelo's, you look at that Canelo-Floyd fight, and I thought Floyd won that fight big. But you look at the fight, and you know one thing about Canelo. This guy's prepared to hop in the ring with the best. Right? I'm sure even Canelo critics will say, you know what? He fought Floyd. He fought Eris Landy Lara. He fought Golovkin. He fought an unbeaten Callum Smith. He went up to 175. He fought Kovalev. Right? So... To the young fighters out there, I believe that, you know, when you have guys who are distinguished, who are in their 30s, right? Andre's a mover and he's 33 years old. Well, if you want Andre's name on your resume, now's the time to fight him. Andre needs the big fights. He doesn't have the big fights of Billy Joe Saunders. Right? If I'm a young guy, I consider taking less money to fight Andre. Because you're going to learn a lot, and if you beat him, that would be a big-time scalp on your mantle. Right? I applaud Canelo for fighting Floyd Mayweather. Canelo did go the distance against Floyd. Right? Understand, you don't necessarily have to beat a living legend, 
or a underrated great fighter who's unbeaten, who's had the belt multiple times, who's had multiple title defenses. You don't have to beat them to leave a great impression with boxing fans. Right? Just think about the impression Canelo left by going 12 rounds with Floyd Mayweather. So masterful performance by Andre. If you take one thing away from the early part of this fight, just look at how Andre is trying his best not to allow a pocket to form. I'm telling you, a lot of fighters are so accustomed to having a pocket to fight in that they just won't know what to do when that happens. That's a unique skill. Also, as Andre is moving, ask yourself, do I know which way Andre is going to move next? If the answer is no, then that unpredictability is unique and devastating. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your message in the comment section of this video. Let me also say too, I take Andre over Jamal Charlo, right? Charlo is not this advanced. Let's hope the promoters can figure out how to make that fight happen. If I'm Charlo, I'm thinking, hey, I need big fights on my resume. Right? A mover who's 33, what's my excuse to avoid fighting him? How much longer is Charlo going to wait to fight guys like Demetrius Andre? Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.